So Fran says, uh, hi, we all, all we are new to using Microsoft Teams for our business. It was hoping someone could help me with something. My husband and I both have Microsoft accounts and I've set up Teams and have been trialing it on ourselves for a few weeks to navigate my way around it. I now want to start adding our employees to Teams to enable them to use shifts, clocking in and out, et cetera. I understand that we will need to set them up with an email address to do so, but could someone confirm what sort of Microsoft account they will need? Do they need a license of some sort? Yes. All right, <laughs> thank you. Ultimately, ultimately, yes. Um, it sounds like they're just using the free version of Teams. The like, you know, you got the consumer side sort of thing, um, and that's a little different than if you want to have a business with employees and paying for license. You know, there's the small business versions. They'd need to update their licensing. The thing is that it won't be whatever they've already created across the two. They'd be starting again with a effectively a new license. Yeah, it, the free version for those that aren't familiar with the two, it's out there. I just actually went through this with uh, with uh, with somebody that we're partnering with that is in the Salesforce community and was not a Teams user, and so in, went through the install, and it really is just the baseline service. So people don't have to have Teams installed to participate in Teams meetings. Mm -hmm. You can send an invite. They can access via the browser. Um, they do need to have a version, the free version of Teams installed to be able to go in and see documents and other assets within there. When you start looking at the collaborative apps like Shifts, you have to have a license to be able to leverage those things. And there's, I don't remember what Shifts works across the F licenses as well as the E licenses. So it's meant for that. Yeah. So depending on the level of access, what kind of employees that you have, you don't need to pay the $36 a month or whatever it is that an E3 license is for that. They may be able to get by with the F licenses, the field licenses, and pay a lot less that has limited access and tooling. So depending on what they need, um, I'm not a licensing expert, um, but you definitely want to go look at those others. Of what do they really need to do? Do they need the full suite of Microsoft 365, all the collaborative apps, Word, PowerPoint, all those things? Um, are they going to be doing other things that you're going to want them to go into SharePoint and, and other locations? Or is it just like the shifts, they get information, they upload some things, they have email. So just like the basics for people out in the field or, or working in a storefront or things like that. Um, so there are different options. They're considered first line workers, right? Yeah. Yeah. First line, front, front line. I've heard front line, first line. Yeah. But yeah. And I, I think this is a good point um, to to comment. This is why people bring in somebody to do consulting in terms of like making sure they've got the right licenses. Um, I mean, that can pay for itself really fast if you have employees. And for example, if you're paying for a very expensive license for an employee that maybe only needs an exchange license or an F1 license or something like that, and you're paying for a more expensive license, um, sometimes, you know, it's the idea of understanding, like you said, what is it they need to be able to do and in which applications? Because for example, you could do simply um, an exchange license with Teams Exploratory um, for a specific user if they don't need to use all of the bells and whistles of Teams. But like you said, if they want to use something like Shifts, then they're going to have a, have to have at least an F license or greater to be able to use the features that are in Teams. So I think it's just smart to um, maybe have somebody take a look at what you're trying to accomplish, how many users you've got. Um, if you participate with a CSP, um, a lot of times they can get you discounts because um, they can get things, you know, on sale or they can get you a benefit maybe that you couldn't get yourself if you go directly to Microsoft. It, it also, if you, it, especially if you're working with a CSP or an MSP, if somebody is managing your account and work with, it's like your outsourced IT team, is they can go and look at and look at the usage reports as well and maybe better tell you hey if you're if you're paying too much if there's a better way that you can align with the various license types and you know get you want to get the most value out of the solution as well but um you know it, you might be overpaying for what you actually need great